What do you learn at an audio engineering school? Should I go? And is it gonna pay off if I do? My name's in Tempest, and I'm gonna try to answer these questions by sharing with you the 10 things that I learned going to an audio engineering school. If you're researching whether or not to go to an audio engineering school and what you might be learning there, I hope this video will help you out and get an idea of some of the points that you'll cover. Also, I hope that you'll stay for the end of the video where I give you kind of a bonus tip as to why I decided to go to an audio engineering school. But let's get into it. In no particular order, here are 10 things that I learned. Number one, signal flow. My professors dug this idea into our brains and how important signal flow is. So what is signal flow? Signal flow is basically what goes in between the audio source and the final output. Whether you're putting EQs, compressors, reverbs, delays between the audio source and the final output, you're going to be changing the sound. Signal flow is also really important when you're actually working in a recording studio, in a recording environment, or even when you're doing live sound. So what happens when you're dealing with a lot of external equipment, such as microphones, audio interfaces, external hardware, and you're not getting your sound source through your monitors, what do you do? This is where the audio engineer comes in. This is where your schooling and expertise comes in. Audio engineers are problem solvers, first and foremost, before all the fun stuff, such as reverbs, delays, sound design, etc. Number two, using external hardware. This right here is actually one of the big reasons why I decided to go to an audio engineering school because you get to be hands-on with external hardware that you probably won't be able to afford for a very long time, for the most of us at least. By external hardware, I'm referring to analog hardware such as um, analog EQs, compressors, preamps, things like that. Now, even though the music industry is gearing a lot more towards digital music production, digital mixing, there are some advantages of having analog equipment and especially being able to know how to use it. They have different colorations that we are emulating in modern day plugins, but there's a lot of analog enthusiasts that say that there's nothing like the sound of analog equipment. So by going to an audio engineering school, you can be hands-on with this external hardware and use your ears and find out for yourself if you can hear that analog difference. Let's move on to number three, learning how to use a mixing console. You know those big recording consoles that you see in every major recording studio? Yeah, well, imagine being able to look at that and say, yeah, I know how to use this. Let's record this session. A part of an audio engineer's job is to get great recordings and to be able to know how to use a mixing console. You wanna know the secret? to using mixing consoles? Signal flow. I said it earlier, but this is the reason why my professors dug in this idea of signal flow into our audio engineering brains. Signal flow may be the single most important thing in audio engineering, and that's really all a mixing console is. The signal from the audio source going to the final output through the mixing board. Going to an audio engineering school, you might have the opportunity to have some hands-on training with these mixing boards, which means that when you go to a recording studio or if you wanna work at a recording studio, you'll know how to work the board. So let's move on to number four, recording techniques for various instruments. So what microphone should you use for vocals? What microphone should you use for brass instruments, wind instruments, drums, guitars? that's what you'll cover. Not only will you know what microphones to use or which ones will have different coloration, but you'll also know proper distances and the idea of the proximity effect and various other recording techniques. I should say this as well, it's not always about just the microphone that you're using and it's not always just about the performer. It's also about the room that you're in. Another recording technique that you'll learn is knowing your room and knowing where to place certain instruments, certain amplifiers, where to get a decent sound. So let's get into number five and probably the one that most people are curious about, 
mixing, and mastering. Going to an audio engineering school, you will definitely be learning different mixing and mastering techniques, when to use EQs, compressors, how much compression is too much, when to use delays in your mixes, what reverbs sound good on what instruments. You'll learn a bunch of different techniques that you'll find really useful. And a lot of times mixing is genre specific. So you have certain rules for certain genres that people have followed to get certain sounds. Having a teacher that understands or is a professional mixing or mastering engineer can really help get your mixing chops up and your mastering chops up. Even if you don't wanna be a mixing engineer or a mastering engineer, if you're an independent artist as I am, at least you'll know this information so that you can apply it to your own music and be able to save some money while you're trying to make your way in the music industry. Let's get into number six, 5.1 surround sound mixing. Being able to do 5.1 surround sound mixes in a controlled environment, like the control room of a recording studio, is very rare. And to be able to do that is a treat just in itself. You'll learn what 5.1 surround sound mixing sounds like, how you can mix, certain techniques that you can use. And to be honest, it's not very cost effective to do it at your house. So if you're looking to work in the film industry on the audio side, having this 5.1 surround sound mixing experience by going to an audio engineering school will be really, really helpful. On to number seven, analog versus digital music. There are a lot of advantages and disadvantages making music with analog equipment, just as there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages making music digitally. For example, using analog equipment to record, analog enthusiasts claim that it's just livelier, warmer, something that our ears prefer to listen to. But the disadvantage of using analog equipment is the time cost that you lose, the maintenance that you need, and the physical errors that exist with using analog equipment. Advantages of working digitally is time cost. You have limited redos and undos for each sound that you create. You can put nearly limitless sessions on a hard drive and the practicality of having a hard drive the size of your hand is much more practical than having a huge analog uh, recording tape. But when the analog realm and the digital realm work well together, it's a beautiful thing. And as an audio engineer, you'll know how to work in both realms. At an audio engineering school, you'll learn how to record the tape, how to use external hardware, how to utilize a patch bay, how to use a mixing console. And from the digital realm, you'll learn the different file formats, how to utilize bit depth, what's the importance of dithering, etc., etc. By knowing how to work in both realms, you can take the advantages of both and make great music. And that really is the end goal of all of this. So let's move on to number eight, ADR and Foley. So ADR stands for Automatic Dialogue Replacement and Foley is the practice of re-recording sounds in a controlled environment like a recording studio for TV and film. It was such a joy to be able to do Foley at my audio engineering school. It's a lot of fun. And if you're looking to work in TV and film on the audio side, your audio engineering school may just teach you about ADR and Foley, which will be extremely helpful. The reason for ADR is because typically the audio that is captured on a film set is too noisy to use as final audio. So instead, the actors will come into a recording studio, re-record their lines, and it's up to the audio engineer and the actor to match up the dialogue with a rough cut of the scene. The reason for Foley is a similar reason for ADR. Typically, the audio that was captured doesn't have enough impact to really sell the story or dramatize the story. So what Foley artists do is reenact the scene, add certain sounds that should be added in order to add more impact. For example, Foley artists will find a sound that sounds like bones are breaking 
because actors aren't really able to break their bones on set. Right? Or maybe the sword just needs to clang a little harder or the rubber on the tires needs to screech a little louder and the audio just needs to be cleaner. Well, that's the job of the Foley artist and it's also the job of the audio engineer to get a nice clean sound. Okay, moving on. So number nine, live sound. A lot of audio engineering schools will have classes on live sound. Live sound is how to set up for concerts or events. Live sound is a completely different beast than recording studios. Recording studios are controlled environments and live sound, anything can happen. Things you'll learn regarding live sound at an audio engineering school will typically be things like what does the front of house engineer do? What does the stage engineer do? How do you set up stage monitors? How do you set up the front of house monitors? How do I EQ in order for there not to be feedback? What do I do if there is feedback on stage, which is a very common problem? How do I EQ and adjust levels in order to get a great sound in a live setting? Because live concerts and live events, the environment is changing all the time and you need to be able to compensate for that. Things are changing all the time, artists are moving things around and feedback might occur. You need to know how to handle these problems on the fly. That is what you'll learn at an audio engineering school. You'll get your chops up, you'll learn what it takes to be in that type of fast paced environment and it's a good way to make sure that you'll succeed. Okay, number 10, acoustic design. So acoustic design is similar to live sound where the environment is different every time. So an audio engineer or rather an acoustic designer needs to be able to know what to add or what to subtract in a given environment in order to get a great sound. Now people get paid a lot of money to design a well acoustified room. Is acoustified a word? You get what I mean though. At an audio engineering school though, you will learn a lot of acoustic concepts such as what are bass traps and when or how or where should I apply them? What are diffusers? What is the proper speaker placement in order to create a good mixing position? What are hanging ceilings and why are those important? What is the best ground to have? What uh, proper foundation? What should the walls consist of in order for sound not to bounce around and confuse your mixing? Acoustic design is actually a pretty scientific process. And again, people get paid a lot of money to do this. And if you've researched uh, acoustic products, they are pretty expensive. But with your audio engineering schooling, you'll get a pretty good idea on how to make your environment sound better. All right, so those are just the topics of what I learned at my audio engineering school. Now I have one bonus tip slash conclusion for you guys, and I hope that you stick around to hear this. Now, I wanna give you guys the reason why I decided to go to an audio engineering school, and because I know that a lot of you guys might be researching and trying to figure out if you should go. So I hope this will help. Now, when I started making music, I just researched and I researched on YouTube a lot. And um, to be honest, I really don't think that I needed to go to an audio engineering school after the amount, years and years of learning on YouTube. But the reason why I went is kind of for two, maybe three reasons. One. Luckily, it was in my means. Um, I paid my way through my school. Um, it was at a community college, but this recording program that I went through was actually really, really top notch. So it was within my means. And uh, kind of the main reason that I went to the audio engineering school is because I am very serious about doing music and um, it was important for me to fill in the gaps of what I didn't know. I wanted to know, and I still do, I'm still constantly learning. I wanna know 
everything I can. I want to be really, really good. So I went to the audio engineering school because I wanted to fill in the gaps of what I didn't know and the things that I really didn't understand. And to be able to have someone who has been doing this for a long time, my professor, who actually owns uh, a local recording studio and it's been open for decades now, I wanted to know what he knew and that actually turned out to be really, really helpful. So if you're trying to figure out if you should go to an audio engineering school, the first thing I would advise is uh, stay within your means because the music industry is constantly changing for me personally If you can afford it go to a really nice audio engineering school But I also don't think that you'll need it because the concepts are going to be the same if you're paying 40,000 80,000 for an audio engineering school and you can afford it great if not maybe try and find a cheaper option but just stay within your means because chances are some of the information is going to change. Also, and this might be the most important, um, fill in the gaps of the things that you don't know. That'll make you a hundred times better. And that will, I think, and in my personal experience, it's made me money knowing those small facts. It gives you some credibility. Also, if you're able to get a degree out of it, Certificates are great, degrees still go a little further. And I know that there's this idea that people don't need to go to school to make money, 100% true. But it does make you hireable, and more so if you do have a degree as opposed to a certificate. Just a thought. Well, there's my two cents, I hope that helps guys. There it is. 10 things that I learned from my audio engineering school. I really hope this helped you guys, whether you're just researching or trying to genuinely figure out if you wanna go to an audio engineering school. If this video helped in any way, leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more content and more tutorials. And hey, if I covered anything here and you want me to go more in depth, I would be 100% down to make a video tutorial on any of these topics. Anyways guys, my name's Intempus. I'll see you guys next time.